As a forestry student, Flagstaff is a great location to be. Northern Arizona University, I think, is just one of the most gorgeous areas in the Southwest. The forest we have here, the peaks, and having the Centennial Forest so nearby just lets us, as forestry students, go out and have class out there and do experiments. The Centennial Forest was created in uh, April of 2000 and it was created for the purpose of research and education and also to help protect our community against wildfire. Well there are really two parts to the Centennial Forest. There's the historic school forest which is almost 50 years old, almost as old as the school itself. In 2000 it was expanded from an original 4,000 acre section to the forest we have now which is over 47,000 acres. The Centennial Forest is managed by us, by the School of Forestry, but it's really an asset of the entire university. The NAU Centennial Forest is made up of three blocks. The largest block is contiguous, and it's made up of about 20,000 acres, and it's located north of Flagstaff, west of Wapatki National Monument. And the vegetation is primarily pinyon, pine, and juniper trees. The second part of the Centennial Forest is made up of another 20,000 acres, but they're non-contiguous. They lie in a checkerboard pattern southwest of Flagstaff, and they're made up mostly of ponderosa pine. Our two outlying sections are east of Flagstaff, and they're each about 640 acres. One is called the Turkey Hills section, and the other is called the Sheep Hills section. They're made up of ponderosa pine, and in this area you will find Picture Canyon, an important archaeological site within the area of Flagstaff. The Centennial Forest is used to support a variety of uh, summer educational programs. And these educational programs are aimed at K-12 through students. What they do is they conduct their own science project during the week. And at the end of it, they do a presentation. It's just really fun to see the students all excited about what they did during the week. To me, it's a very rewarding part of what we do. Our overall goal is to nurture the love of nature in kids. Get them out in the woods, show them why it's wonderful, how they can enjoy it safely. And this has been a very successful summer environmental education camp. We also use the campsite that we have out there to give a little bit of an orientation to our undergraduate students who are just joining us each fall. And so we have this week-long um, camp out out there in the Centennial Forest. The students learn about the facilities, they learn about what we do, they get introduced to a pretty significant number of our faculty, but it's also a really good chance for them to get to know each other and to establish friendships right in the first month that they're here. Our students may be exposed to the Centennial Forest very early in their stay here. The Centennial Forest and just the surrounding Ponderosa Pine Forest is really important to NAU and its community in that it's part of our identity. We live in the middle of the largest contiguous Ponderosa Pine Forest in the world. Where else can you go to school and study that? Unfortunately, not all forestry programs have that. Some forestry programs are located in major cities. It takes them a while to get out to the forest. We can be out to our forest in about 10 minutes. I teach a plant identification class out of the School of Forestry, and we don't have a classroom. It's completely dedicated to being outside and standing up on the peaks and like, wow, this is my classroom. We never know exactly what the forest is going to hold. So when we go out there, it's a learning experience for everyone. Having any forest as close as we have is, is a real asset. I couldn't imagine graduating without having Centennial Forest as part of my education. Research on the Centennial Forest spans several different realms of forest ecological research. And it, it relates to how to manage the forest. Taking tree height, tree diameter, tree age, looking at the health of the forest. We do fire models out there looking at how much fuel is on the ground and potentially what could happen if a fire went through. There's additional research on the forest on uh, tree resistance to bark beetles. 
We always welcome highly qualified graduate students and other scientists to work with us on the Centennial Forest. There are many unanswered uh, questions about forest management and ecology that are waiting to be pursued and discovered and answered on the Centennial Forest. The Centennial Forest is a really big asset from a research perspective, but it's also a huge responsibility because of the threat of fire in our southwest forest ecosystems. During fire season, the prevailing winds come out of the southwest and blow right into Flagstaff, and that's exactly where our sections of Ponderosa Pine are. Any mismanagement of those forests puts Flagstaff at risk. The community of Flagstaff has made a lot of progress in reducing the fire hazard of local forest. Groups have worked together to reduce fuels by thinning the forest and by using prescribed burns which can reduce the fuels. So increasingly Flagstaff is being surrounded by a ring of forest that likely will not burn severely in a wildfire anymore because of these actions by foresters to reduce the fuels. Anything we do to manage forests nowadays has implications not only locally to that forest, but globally because of the impact of forests in global carbon cycles. The Northern Arizona Flux Tower project that I lead is a very important resource in providing data on the uh, carbon storage of Northern Arizona Ponderosa Pine Forest. We're using instrument towers that have uh, sensors that measure the exchange of carbon dioxide between the atmosphere and the land above the canopy of the forest. We do this in order to uh, measure whether the forest is taking in and storing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which is very important to mitigate the CO2 uh, concentration increases in the atmosphere that cause uh, global warming, or whether the forest is a source, and some forests actually release more carbon during short periods to the atmosphere than they take in. And this really leads to one of our research questions, which is trying to understand how uh, the types of thinnings that foresters conduct uh, affect the carbon balance of the forest. The School of Forestry just offers extraordinary opportunities if you're interested in the environment or research or public access. It's more than just a place where you learn about trees.